Good day. This is the seventh review video for the Math 22 series. In this video, we will be talking about a series of constant terms and their convergence. Okay, let's start. First, let us recall what is an infinite series or simply series. An infinite series is an expression of the form, summation of a sub n with n ranging from 1 to positive infinity. This is equal to a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 and beyond. The numbers a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and so on and so forth are called the terms of the series. Next, we will be talking about the kth partial sum of the series. The kth partial sum is defined as, for all k in the set of all natural numbers, the finite sum s sub k is defined as the summation of a sub n, with n ranging from 1 to k, which is equal to a sub 1, plus a sub 2, plus a sub 3, up to a sub k. Now that we know the kth partial sum of a series, we can now determine whether a series is convergent or divergent. So let S sub k denote the kth partial sum of a series A sub n. The series is said to be, number one, convergent with some S, if and only if the sequence of partial sums converges to S. This means that the limit of partial sums or S sub k as k approaches infinity is equal to S. In this case, we can write this as the summation of A sub n, with n ranging from 1 to positive infinity is equal to s. If there is no real number s that satisfies the above equation, the series is said to be divergent. Now, we will be talking about two important series for this topic and other succeeding topics as well. First, it's a geometric series. The geometric series is defined as, for all non-zero real numbers A, which is the first term of the series, and R, which is a common ratio, the geometric series A times R raised to N converges with some A over 1 minus R if the absolute value of the common ratio is less than 1. If the absolute value of the common ratio is greater than 1, then the geometric series diverges. Another series that you will tackle throughout your lesson for series is the harmonic series, which is the series 1 over n, which diverges. Next, it's a theorem regarding the convergence and divergence of series. First, for all non-zero real number C, if a series A sub n converges, then a series of the product of C and A sub n also converges. The sum of the said series is equal to the product of C and the sum of the series A sub n. If A sub n diverges, then the series of the product of A sub n and C also diverges. Number two, if A sub n and B sub n are both convergent series, then the series of their sum is also convergent with the sum of the previous two series. Number three, if A sub n is convergent and B sub n is divergent, then the series of their sum is divergent. And number four, lastly, suppose that A sub n is equal to B sub n, but for a finite value of n, meaning the terms of A sub n and B sub n are almost the same except for sum. Then, if A sub n is convergent, then B sub n is also convergent. Remember that their sum is not always equal since not all terms of A sub n is in B sub n or vice versa. Next, if A sub n is divergent, then B sub n is also divergent. Next is the recap for the divergence test. The divergence test states that if the series A sub n converges, then the limit of A sub n as n approaches infinity is equal to zero. Equivalently, if the limit of A sub n as n approaches infinity is not equal to zero, then the series diverges. Remember, if the limit of A sub n as n approaches infinity is equal to zero, then the divergence test is inconclusive. This is because not all divergent series' limit is not equal to zero. Let us consider the harmonic series. The limit of 1 over n as n approaches infinity is equal to zero. 
However, we know that the harmonic series is divergent. So, so always remember that the divergence test fails if the limit of a sub n as n approaches infinity is equal to zero. This ends our recap for the topic. We will now proceed to the exercises. Here are the exercises in this video. In this video, we will be answering numbers 1, 4, and 5. The remaining items will be left for the viewer to answer. Pause this video if you wish to answer the exercises first. Okay, problem number 1. Determine whether the series of cosine 1 over n minus cosine 1 over n plus 1 converges or diverges. Okay, solution. We can observe that the partial sum of the series, if k is equal to 1, is equal to cosine 1 minus cosine 1 half. Next, the partial sum of the series, if k is equal to 2, is cosine 1 minus cosine 1 half plus cosine 1 half minus cosine 1 third. Observe that we can cancel out cosine 1 half and we will be left with cosine 1 minus cosine 1 third. Next, the kth partial sum of the series, if k is equal to 3, is cosine 1 minus cosine 1 half plus cosine 1 half minus cosine 1 third plus cosine 1 third minus cosine 1 fourth. In here, we can cancel out both cosine 1 half and cosine 1 third, and we will be left with cosine 1 minus cosine 1 fourth. As you can see, we can generalize this for all k in the set of all natural numbers. The kth partial sum of the series is equal to cosine 1 minus cosine 1 half plus cosine 1 half minus cosine 1 third plus cosine 1 third minus cosine 1 fourth up to plus cosine 1 over k minus 1 minus cosine 1 over k plus cosine 1 over k minus cosine 1 over k plus 1. We can observe that we can cancel out cosine 1 half cosine 1 third, cosine 1 fourth, until cosine 1 over k. And we will be left with cosine 1 minus cosine 1 over k plus 1. And so we can now get the limit of the partial sum cosine 1 minus cosine 1 over k plus 1 as k approaches positive infinity. We know that the limit of a constant is the constant. Hence, limit of cosine 1 as k approaches infinity is cosine 1. Then, the limit of cosine 1 over k plus 1 as k approaches infinity is equal to, pwede natin ipasok si limit dun sa loob ng cosine. Then, we get the limit ng 1 over k plus 1 as k approaches infinity, which is equal to 0. So, the limit of the partial sum as k approaches infinity is equal to cosine 1 minus cosine 0. And we know that cosine 0 is equal to 1. Then this is equal to cosine 1 minus 1. Since the sequence of partial sums converges to cosine 1 minus 1, the series converges with sum cosine 1 minus 1. OK, next problem. As I said earlier, the second problem will be left as an exercise. Happy solving. Next problem. This will also be left as, as an exercise. As a hint, use partial fractions here para mas madilihan kayo. Okay, next problem, number four. Determine if the series 4 raised to n over 5 raised to 2n plus 1 converges or diverges. For the solution, we can observe that in the series we can factor out 1 over 5. And using the loss of exponent, we can do this. Pwede natin erase yung buong fraction na yon to n. And then since 5 squared is equal to 25, then ito ang makukuha natin. We can observe that the resulting series is a geometric series with first term one-fifth, and common ratio, 4 over 25. Since the common ratio is less than 1, the series converges to, we can compute the sum using this equation. Plugging in the correct values, we get 5 over 21. 
So, the geometric series converges with sum 5 over 21. Okay, next problem. We can check if the series sine n plus 1 over n converges or diverges. For the solution, we can note that we can take the limit of sine n plus 1 over n to check using the divergence test if the series diverges. So, itong limit ito, equal ito sa, pwede mo ipasok yung limit dun sa loob ng sine to get this, this, and the limit of n plus 1 over n as n approaches infinity. Since infinity over infinity ito, pwede natin gamitin yung L'Hopital's rule. Makukuha dito is 1. So, limit of 1 as n approaches infinity is equal to 1. So, this is sine 1. Then, this is the equal to sine 1, which is not equal to 0. Since not 0 ito, then by the divergence test, the series diverges. Okay, since the last problem will be given as an exercise to the viewer, then this will be the end of the video. Make sure to try and solve all the problems on your own. Good luck and stay safe.